Hello, and welcome back to Epileptic Disorders Roadmap to EEGs. My name is Erfan Sheikh, and in this module, we will complete our discussion of developmental and epileptic encephalopathies. In part two of this module, we will mainly focus on childhood onset epileptic encephalopathies, including lennox gastaut syndrome and lendau kleffner syndrome, which is a subtype of epileptic encephalopathies with spike wave activation and sleep. Before we go to the next type of epilepsy syndrome, we will briefly talk about developmental encephalopathy with spike wave activation and sleep and epileptic encephalopathy with spike wave activation and sleep based on the new ILAE criteria. Developmental and epileptic encephalopathies with spike wave activation and sleep refer to a spectrum of conditions that are characterized by various combinations of cognitive, language, behavioral, and motor regression associated with marked spike in wave activation and sleep. Regression is seen within weeks from the EEG pattern. These two syndromes share similar clinical features and management implications. They are grouped together because they carry similar implications and the syndrome highlights the need to inquire about specific clinical features when seeing a child such as auditory agnosia, global regression of behavior and motor skills, and negative myoclonus. This syndrome is intended to replace syndromes previously named epileptic encephalopathy with continuous spike and wave in sleep and atypical benign partial epilepsy. landau kleffner is a specific type of epileptic encephalopathy um, where regression affects mainly language with an acquired auditory agnosia. Specific focal epilepsy syndrome such as self-limited epilepsy with centrotemporal spikes and self-limited epilepsy with autonomic seizures or other structural focal epilepsies may evolve into epileptic encephalopathy with spike wave activation in sleep, either transiently or for a prolonged period. Sleep EEG must be performed to confirm the diagnosis. The EEG associated with developmental and epileptic encephalopathy with spike wave activation and sleep was known previously as electrical status epilepticus and sleep, or ESES. Historically, ESES was defined as nearly constant epileptiform activity that occupied greater than 85% of slow wave sleep. However, lower percentages of sleep may also be associated with significant regression in cognitive or behavioral function. Epileptic encephalopathy with spike wave activation in sleep is now recognized in patients with pre-existing normal development with an activation of slow 1.5 to 2.5 hertz spike in wave complexes in non-REM, whereas developmental epileptic encephalopathy with spike wave activation in sleep occurs in patients with pre-existing neurodevelopmental disorders and is defined on the basis of documented persisting worsening of various combinations of cognitive language behavioral and motor functions concomitant with significant activation of spike wave complexes during sleep. This bipolar montage EG was taken during sleep and shows continuous high amplitude spike wave discharges in sleep. This EG was taken from a five-year-old patient with normal developmental milestones up until the age of 4.5 years, until she started to have worsening language skills, which eventually led to complete mutism. This patient had lendau kleffner syndrome. As previously stated, lendau kleffner is a specific subtype of epileptic encephalopathy with spike wave activation in sleep, where regression affects mainly language with an acquired auditory agnosia, and the eponym used to describe this syndrome should be retained. Lendau Kleffner syndrome makes its appearance between ages two to eight years of age. The type of aphasia is typically a verbal auditory agnosia, usually with a subacute onset followed by rapid reduction of spontaneous speech, characterized by speech perseverations, paraphasias, phonological errors, and verbal stereotypies. The speech disorder can progress to complete mutism. This is the same patient that was discussed in the previous slide and an EEG shown in average montage. The sensitivity is at 30 microvolts for better visualization and shown are continuous spiking wave discharges in the left hemisphere outlined in the red circle, specifically over the left F3, FP1, and F7 regions. Additionally, there are independent discharges noted over the right P4 and PZ region, also highlighted in the red circles. Interictal EEG showing slow 1.5 to 2 hertz spike in wave abnormalities in non-REM sleep are mandatory for the diagnosis of developmental and epileptic encephalopathy with spike wave activation in sleep and epileptic encephalopathy with spike wave activation in sleep. In addition, EEG abnormalities are markedly activated in sleep. Other mandatory features needed for the diagnosis of this syndrome include cognitive, behavioral, or motor regression, 
or plateauing temporarily. Alerts that should suggest an investigation to an alternate etiology include tonic seizures during sleep and EEG patterns showing generalized paroxysmal fast activity or generalized slow spike in wave complex less than 2.5 Hz, both of which could be seen in lennox gastaut syndrome. Exclusion criteria that should point against the syndrome include seizures consistent with epileptic spasms and an age of onset at less than one year or greater than 12 years of age. This bipolar montage EEG shows a typical electrographic pattern for lennox gastaut syndrome, which consists of generalized slow spike in wave discharges with spikes followed by a negative high voltage slow wave. These are noted to be bilaterally synchronous with an anterior predominance and occur at a frequency of less than 2.5 Hertz in frequency. The spike and slow wave pattern is abundant and often occurs in runs. It could be associated with atypical Epson seizures, but often waxes and wanes without any clinical correlate, both in wakefulness and particularly in sleep. This is the same EEG shown in average montage, and you can see the bilateral frontally dominant spike and slow wave discharges occurring at a frequency of less than 2.5 Hertz, consistent with lennox gastaut syndrome. In this bipolar montage EEG, you can see in the center of the page 15 to 20 Hertz generalized paroxysmal fast activity, which is a typical hallmark EEG finding of lennox gastaut syndrome. This is an average montage showing the same 15 to 20 Hertz generalized paroxysmal fast activity. Note the slow spike in wave discharges occurring a couple of seconds after the GPFA occurring at a frequency of less than 2.5 Hertz, which are both characteristic features of lennox gastaut syndrome. This EEG shown in bipolar montage is of a patient with lennox gastaut syndrome having a tonic seizure noted in the last several seconds of the page. From the CEG, you can see fast bilateral rhythmic spikes at 15 to 25 hertz outlined in green with the amplitude low at onset, but the increase in discharges progress as a seizure continues, showing a recruiting rhythm. This is predominant over the anterior areas and the vertex, showing little change in frequency throughout the course and diffuse slow wave after the end of the seizure, outlined in blue. With regards to tonic seizures, they are typically diurnal and nocturnal, facilitated in non-REM sleep, and typically occur in clusters. They are axial and involve mainly the proximal parts of the limbs, symmetrically or with unilateral predominance. They consist of sudden flexion of the neck and body, raising of the arms in flexion or extension, extension of the legs, contraction of the face muscles that sometimes can appear very subtle and restrict to the lower lip. Rolling of the eyes and autonomic manifestations can also be seen and can culminate in what appears as a diffuse tremor, which looks rapid and small amplitude jerks that affects the whole body. The distal limb muscles are relatively spared. Tonic seizures can result in falling associated or not with brief loss of consciousness, but they may also be brief and subtle involving only the eyes and changes in respiratory rhythms. This is the same EEG shown in average montage with a burst of bilateral 15 Hertz activity outlined in blue with a recruiting rhythm. There is an initial diffuse decrement outlined in green, followed by a gradual increase in amplitude. Also note there is an aftergoing slow wave when the seizure ends outlined in red. Tonic seizures are the mandatory type of seizures needed to diagnose lennox gastaut syndrome. In addition to tonic seizures, at least one additional seizure type must be present, which may include atypical absence, atonic, myoclonic, focal impaired awareness, generalized tonic-clonic, non-convulsive status epilepticus, and epileptic spasms. Typical interictal EEG patterns of generalized slow spike in wave complexes of less than 2.5 Hz or generalized proxismal fast activity in sleep are also mandatory for the diagnosis of LGS. LGS has a typical age of onset of less than 18 years of age, with long-term outcomes being a drug-resistant epilepsy with mild to profound intellectual disability. Some alerts that should suggest the clinician to investigate other etiologies include interictal EEG showing photoproxismal response at low frequencies, 
Interictal EEG showing persistent focal abnormalities without generalized spike in wave excludes the diagnosis of LGS. Approximately 50% of infants with severe developmental epileptic encephalopathies, including infantile epileptic spasm syndrome or early infantile developmental epileptic encephalopathies, may evolve over time to lennox gastel syndrome. To wrap up, in this module, we have concluded our discussion regarding developmental and epileptic encephalopathies by covering lennox gastel syndrome and Lendau-Kleffner syndrome, which is a subtype of epileptic encephalopathy with spike wave activation in sleep.